Are minor leaguers finally making more than minimum wage? Let's talk about it. So if you followed our videos, you know that I've made multiple videos on how little minor league players actually make. Now, luckily for them, last year they actually got a bump in pay. But is it enough to finally make them get paid more the minimum wage because when I was playing and we'll talk about this in a little bit it was far far less than minimum wage so the first thing is the federal minimum wage rate is 725 an hour but every state is different keep that in mind where I live in Massachusetts the minimum wage is $15 there's seven states in the country however that are under 725 an hour now the average full-time employee works a five-day week for eight hours a day totaling 40 hours a week there's 52 weeks in the calendar year so on average there's 2,080 working hours a year. Now let's pretend you live in Massachusetts, that's $31,200. And if you think that's too high, let's pick a round number like $10 an hour. So now you're making about $20,800 a year. Now, as I said earlier, last year is the first time in which feels like about 100 years that minor leaguers actually got a raise in pay. So a couple things to keep in mind as we get into these numbers. The first thing is minor leaguers only get paid for a five month season. So they don't get paid in spring training and they don't get paid in the playoffs or in the off season. So they're only getting paid for when their season is actually taking place, which is April, May, June, July, and August. Okay, so here are the increases. In single A, it went from $290 a week to $500 a week, which equals $12,000 for the season. In double A, it went from $350 a week to $600 a week, which is $14,400 for the season. And in triple A, it went from $502 a week to $700 a week, which equals $16,800 dollars for the season and in rookie ball they didn't have these numbers i believe it's 400 dollars a week which equals about ten thousand dollars for the season so according to these numbers they're still getting paid less than minimum wage but you may say hey matt why don't they just go out and get a job in the off season and guess what many of them do but a couple of things to keep in mind these players want to play in the major leagues they don't want to just play in the minor leagues so they have to train and you have to train really really hard when you're trying to be the best player in the world at whatever it is you're doing so most players are going to dedicate at least in my experience four to five hours a day and sometimes much more than that to training. So you got to think that most players are going to try to take care of their body pretty much every day and strength and conditioning sessions usually last somewhere from an hour and a half to two hours when you talk about getting your body prepped, then working out and then recovering. And then they're going to also have to work on their sports specific skills. So if you're an infielder, you're going to have to take ground balls a lot. You're going to have to hit. You're going to have to work on your speed. And that goes the same for outfielders and catchers as well. And if you're a pitcher, obviously you're going to work on your pitching mechanics. Now, another thing to keep in mind is instructional league and the Arizona Fall League. So these leagues take place in the fall, typically September, October, a little bit of November. Instructional League is mostly for younger players that are gonna go to their spring training complex, usually for around six to seven weeks, and they're going to train to get better with their actual coaches. And then the Arizona Fall League is more for high-level prospects. It's kind of like an all-star team for all the different prospects in minor league baseball. So if you wanna find a job, you're gonna to have to basically find someone that's willing to hire you for the months of November, December, and January because you're going to spring training in February. So it can be difficult to find a job that you can only work three months. And so a lot of players end up picking up these really odd jobs. A lot of them try to do baseball lessons, but there's not a ton of jobs out there that they can grab. So now let's compare this to what I actually made when I played. So I put down my numbers. In short season, I made a whopping $1,100 a month, which is $5,500 for this season. In single A, it was $1,200 a month, which is $6,000 for the season. In double A, I made $1,700 a month, which is $8,500 for the season. Now I'm becoming rich. And in triple A, it was $2,300 a month, which is $11,500 for the season. Now here are some other things to consider because this changed over the last year or two. Minor league teams are now providing housing for their players. When I played, that was not the case and this was a big living expense a large chunk of my salary would go towards my housing so in most cities you're going to have to find an apartment to live in during the season and what usually happens is a lot of players end up bunking up together i remember in low a ball it felt like we had 10 players living in the same apartment building and i slept in the living room along with a bunch of other players and we had four or five players in each bedroom it's crazy i know but when you're barely making any money you only want to spend a few hundred dollars a month if possible 
to live. Now I got really crazy in AAA one year when I was making $2,300 a month. I decided I was gonna live by myself in a nice place downtown. I ended up paying just over, I think, $1,000 a month. And so I'm making $2,300, but 1,000 of it is going towards my living expenses. So now I'm making only $1,300 a month. Now, the other big thing is food. And this has also gotten a lot better because when I played again back in the day, we got really nothing. Up until about AA, all you got was peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I still have nightmares thinking about seeing that loaf of bread sitting there with that jar of jelly and peanut butter. Absolutely disgusting. I actually hate peanut butter and jelly. And so most days I would just starve or I'd have to bring in my own food. So I have to pay additionally for something different. Now, once you get to double A, usually you start getting a little bit better food and AAA is typically the best. AAA is usually the first place where you can get something before the game and then also after the game. A lot of times you'll have local restaurants that will cater to us. So you come in after the game, you might have some Chick-fil-A or some Applebee's depending on which restaurants are close to the stadium. But you also have to remember that you're gonna pay for this. You're gonna pay for this with your clubhouse dues. So clubhouse dues are anywhere from 10 to $14 in my day. They might be a little bit higher. Now, and what that basically is gonna pay for is for the clubhouse attendants to do your laundry and also to provide you that food before and after games. Now, again, I know a lot of players and some coaches in the minor leagues right now, and they say that the food situation is way, way better. And so that is good. The teams are finally realizing that giving players proper nutrition and not giving them a piece of white bread with peanut butter and jelly on it seven days a week is going to help them get to the big leagues. So in the end, Players are still basically getting paid less than the minimum wage, but it's much, much better than what I had to deal with back in the day. And one last thing, a lot of times when I make these videos, people say, well, what about the high draft picks and the signing bonuses? And I was very, very fortunate. I got over a million dollars as a signing bonus, but please keep in mind that that is very, very rare for players to get large signing bonuses. Most of the players that I played with got no signing bonuses, maybe got a plane flight, maybe got a thousand dollars, and that's really it. So let me know if there's anything else you wanna hear about because the game has changed from when I played in 2006 to 2013. Things are starting to get a little bit better and we can talk about it. So let me know in the comment section below. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly step-by-step step, how to generate power, develop bat speed and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level.